Chris Burton, he really begged the question of what really is art, didn't he? Yes, absolutely. I think one of the things that attracted us to telling his story was the fact that he made art which was really provokes a reaction from people, you know, whether people love it or hate it or somewhere in between. It was art that you really respond to, but it was also art that, yeah, did ask a lot of questions about what the limits of art are and what constitutes art. So that was something that made us really interested to explore his art in the film. Um, can you describe the, the ferment, that, the cultural ferment that was Southern California, um, in which Burden developed and emerged? Yeah, uh, I think um, not having been alive at that time and looking back, um, that the, the Vietnam War was happening, there was unrest on college campuses, uh, the economy in the U.S. was also very challenged, um, which may have fed into the type of minimalist work he did and, and the sculptural work and that there wasn't a lot of um, commercial availability for um for art at that time. Uh, so I think there were a, a number of influences um, uh, from the culture and, and the broader U.S. landscape that, that led to his, um, that influenced him and, at that time. And I think in Southern California specifically as well, you know, that was an interesting place for him to be because it wasn't known as a major artistic center back in the late 60s, early 70s when he started. And for him, I think that really made it feel like a blank canvas where he could experiment and do new things and kind of put his put his stamp on the city and influence the culture, which I think you can see has happened over, over the years since then. Would you say he's like maybe uh, one of the, uh, the principal uh, founders of uh, performance art? I think he's certainly one of the major people in it. I mean, there is a tradition of it before him. I think, you know, there was, in Europe particularly, Viennese actionists were doing things with their body before then, and there were contemporaries of his, some of whom you see in the film. People like Marino Abramovich, who was doing things that were not dissimilar in Europe, Vito Acconci, who was working on the East Coast. But he was certainly one of the, one of the pioneers in that field, I think, particularly in the US. And a lot of the other people that we spoke to who worked in performance, um, you know, mentioned that he was a big influence for them in terms of the commitment to the work that he was doing at that time, um, that that was inspiring to them. So I think, yeah, he's a, he's a, he's a big figure in that movement. How did you guys get such uh, great access to him and to this content? It was, it was a process. We started with a magazine article for Whitewell Magazine. And following that, we made a short film about a sculpture called Beam Drop that Chris made in Antwerp. And on the back of that, we approached Chris about making this feature length documentary following his entire life. So we gained access um, over a number of years and it was a process that evolved. And I think ultimately that's really what um, helped make the film what it was, what it is, is is that Chris trusted us, and that developed over a period of time. That seems to be really important because I mean, at one point he was sort of burnt out on on the press, was he not? Yeah, I think um, you know, and and I think he sort of mentions it in the film. I think there was certainly a point, particularly towards the end of his uh, time working in performance, that he was definitely. Um, a bit frustrated with the depiction in the press and you know there was this label attached to him the evil Knievel of art and which we discuss in the film so I think he was he was um, he was frustrated at that time with how he was being depicted and he was later in life um, you know quite quite a private person he had a studio and home up in Topanga Canyon which is nearby to here but quite remote and he what really gave him pleasure was staying up there and working on new pieces so he had quite a private life and I think, so I think, yeah, as Rich said, getting to know him over time, um, him getting to trust us and finding a good way to work together was kind of key to being able to um, make a film about his life and work. Does your film explore how he goes from being a performance artist to a pretty well established sculptor and uh, installations artist? Do you, do you, do you, do you, do you, just, do you explore that? Yeah, I, I think we do. I think it's a it's a tough question, and um, 
we the film tries and, and Tim and I tried to do our best to explore that transition but there isn't a clean answer in that he didn't wake up one day and say ah oh, I'm gonna be a sculptor now it was it happened over you know decades frankly um, and I'm sure there were a number of factors um, personal and professional that led to that transition and that difference between, you know, the, that transition that he went on was one of the things that initially got us interested in the story, you know, being aware of his performance works and then seeing these sort of large-scale sculptures that were popping up in Los Angeles and becoming very prominent, you know, was one of the things that got us interested in, in looking more deeply at his work, trying to sort of understand how that transition took place and uh, what linked the, that artist who made those two seemingly very different things. You've got some great footage. Uh are all the interviews yours, or, or did he? I guess you, you got some archival stuff as well. Uh, can can you can you comment on how you went about collecting your material? Yeah, I mean, all the interviews that you see with people uh, today, or when we were making the film a few years ago, are obviously th those are all shot by us. But as you say, there's a lot of archival material in there as well. Um, it was a combination of things. Chris had his own archive of materials documenting his his earlier works. So obviously there's the pieces themselves, the performance pieces. Um, often there isn't a huge amount documenting those. It might just be a very short um, film clip or a handful of photographs, you know, grainy black and white photographs. Um, so we had access to his archives and then we worked hard to find other things as well. And um, we unearthed some interviews with him from earlier points in his career from various sources, which we found really useful for kind of, um, you know, making that earlier time period in the 70s when he was doing performances to really bring that time period to life and sort of explore the ideas that he was grappling with earlier in his career. Tell us about uh, some, of the, some of the material you have in your film, especially about his early performance art. Can you, can you talk about some of that content that you have in there? Him, him getting shot, uh, th those things. Sure. Um, that's the shoot piece is one of the few video pieces that Chris had. Um, uh, most of his performances existed only as still photographs, um, and they were almost all provided to us by Chris. Um, and we really tried to work with um, the photographs and the documentation evidence, but also get people to tell stories who were there, because really the pieces exist on both levels. They exist as a story that's told, um, and some of them have got to the point of urban legends, and they also exist as these shocking, provocative, and um, very minimalist in some cases uh, photographs. So we tried to incorporate both of those elements in how the pieces live in telling the story of each performance.